Hi there, my friend and friends. If you've ever tried to create a modal that would slide in or animate or fade out and fade in and all of that like this, or you've done a popover, or you've done anything that involved going from a display none to a display of block or grid or flex or whatever it is, uh, you probably found out it was a lot harder than you thought it would be to do something like this. And you ended up using some JavaScript to do different things and maybe using event listeners or whatever it is, or just toggling based on set timeouts. There's just a few different methods you can use, but those are all things of the past now because the CSS working group heard us and we can do things just like this with animations and transitions now. And if we're just doing it like I have here, where it's just a transform with a opacity fade and stuff like that, an animation is definitely overkill but it's actually a little bit easier to do it with an animation. So we're gonna look at that first, and then we're gonna look at how we can do it with a transition instead, just cause there's a few extra new things along the way to get it working there, but it's super awesome and super easy to do. All right, so right now I'm using a dialog right here. So you can see that with this button here, and I'm just using the show modal and close methods right now. So it opens and closes the modal. And the only really important thing with this modal is that the dialog element when we're doing it, it will have a display of none is a user agent style that gets toggled over to a display block when we click on it. So I don't actually have to declare these because they're coming from the user agent styles, but I'm gonna leave them here because it is quite possible that you're animating or doing something with these where you actually have to declare these properties. And so I just wanna make it really explicit that this is on my closed state and this is on my open state that we have those right there. Now it's a little bit hard to see in the demo I have set up right now, but there is a backdrop that comes through here. And for simplicity, I'm gonna just put that as a display none as well for now, but we're gonna come back and look at how we can animate the backdrop as well, just cause there is actually a little bit of a gotcha with that. And we'll talk more about what backdrop even is if you're not familiar with it. So as I said, we're gonna start with the animation first uh, and with keyframes, and then we'll look at how to do it with transitions. Cause doing it with uh, keyframes is actually incredibly easy now. We used to not be able to do this. But what we can do is we can create some keyframes like this for, I'm just gonna call it a peer, where we wanna go from an opacity of zero to an opacity of one. And this actually, I think, always worked uh, no matter what. So it was when we go to the open state, we could come and we could do an animation then of our appear, and let's just say it's one second long. So we can see it's working right there that we're coming in, and that's perfect. Where things break is if we wanted it to go away. And one thing with uh, keyframes, if ever you're using them, if you want like an animation to run one way and then another, you actually have to change the animation name uh, or it won't work. So I'm gonna do a vanish here and then it's just gonna be two and then this will be our from and that's kind of awkward. So we can switch the order, though the order doesn't matter. It's then the keyframes that we're talking about that are the important part. But the vanish will go from the opacity of one to an opacity of zero. And you would think all we'd need to do here is we could just copy this line, switch it over to a vanish. Uh, and you would think that would work because then when we click on it, we're adding the animation, it appears, and then we'd click this and it would vanish. But it doesn't, and that's because display none is instantly toggling to a display of none. It just happens. It goes to display none, and there's no animation to run anymore because the element is display none, and it's gone. And this is always frustrating, and there's JavaScript solutions to this and stuff, but we don't need to do that anymore, uh, luckily. So now what we can do is, all oh, this is the, the simplest thing in the world. We, we just have to come here and say that this is a display of block or whatever, you, you know, if you're using grid or something else, you'd put whatever your display value is here, and then here you just do a display of none. And normally, if you look at the spec, display shouldn't be able to animate like this, and it's actually a discrete animation, meaning uh, normally discrete animations flip at the 50% mark, so it would be halfway through the animation, it would do it, but display never worked that way. Display is always, and it's in the spec that it would do it instantly at the beginning of the animation, but if we do this, now it knows to wait until the end. So if I click on it, it fades in, and now if I click on it again, it fades out and it works and it's fabulous. <laughs> um, it's so nice that this is easy to do now. It's, it's wonderful to use. But this is a lot of work for something that would just should work with transitions, right? I have to create an appear and a vanish keyframes and set them all up. And then I need the animation here and a different animation here. It's not that bad, honestly, but it's more work than what we actually need to do with the caveat that if you have more complex things going on where you actually need multiple keyframes, then this is what you'd actually want to be doing, right? You know, if you have like spinning and moving and you have more than a from and a to, so it's not just the 0% and the 100%, there's other steps involved, well then this is the direction you want to go in. 
If all you need to do is make something fade in or out, or we're gonna see how we can move it up and down and all of that, we can now do that with transitions as well. But as I said, it's a little bit trickier. So if you do wanna access this code exactly as it is here with the keyframes, it will be linked in the description. Um, but we're also gonna now take this and we're gonna make this work with transitions instead. So I'm gonna delete all of that and now we're back to what we were before and we'll see how we can do it with a transition. So let's also drop this off from here and here. And again, the, the one frustrating thing for me on this whole thing is just there's a little caveat with this backdrop, but um, it's not a big deal, but it's, it's a little bit of an annoying thing <laughs> that we'll see. Uh, but what you'd want, what you think you could do here is let's just say that we wanna go from an opacity of zero and then here we wanna have our opacity of one, right? Opacity of one. And we just then ideally, we just do a transition of our opacity. And once again, we'll do one second. And we would hope that when we click that, it would work, but you can see it doesn't. And this is a thing with transitions is if there's a property that's changing that is considered a discrete animation and a display block is one of those, it will prevent any transitions from working. And just if you don't really know what a discrete animation is, just really, really quickly here, I'm gonna do a little interruption because we're gonna look at this with background images and background images are considered a discrete animation. So here I just have this animation that's happening where it should take 10 seconds to happen when I hover, but you'll see it just instantly changes. And it's actually instantly changing after five seconds because it's getting to the 50% mark of the animation and then it just instantly switches because we can't do a background image. And I only have it on hover right now. So as soon as I leave, it goes back to its starting state. So the animation's only running here. Now this is different from display because display property, we're here, I'm gonna throw these spans in here. And if we go and take a look, um, I'm also doing body hover and then my div. So I want just this div with all my hands. I want it to go from a display none to having a display of block. And it should take 10 seconds for this to happen. So you'd expect the hands to actually show up after five seconds because it's a dis something that's a discrete animation. But when I go on, you can see they actually instantly appear. Uh, and then the rest happens. And the opacity is not working, nothing else is working. And that's because if something has a discrete animation, the transitions will not work at all uh, is the important thing. And so it just, it's instantly going from here to here and it's not transitioning at all. It just, the hands come on and off and there's no delay or anything. And this might have you wondering, how do you know if something is a discrete animation? So we're gonna jump on over to MDM now where we have the background image, which I just mentioned was. And here, if you go on over to the, in this article section, there's always gonna be a formal definition. And if you go to the formal definition, you'll get this table like this and there's always an animation type and you can see it says discrete. If we go to background position and we go to the formal definition, we're going to see that in this case, the animation type is a repeatable list. And let's just go over to, let's say clip path. Um, as another one, we're gonna click on formal definition. And in this case, animation type, yes, as specified for basic shape, otherwise no. So you'll get more information on it. The one that you're looking for, obviously, you know, bottom, we can go check that one too really fast a length, a percentage, or a calc. So there's different limitations sometimes on them, but if it says discrete, it's one of those ones where it's gonna happen in the middle, but we're getting around that now. We're gonna see what that is. So sorry for the little sidetrack here. And I'm gonna stay on the sidetrack for just one more second, because if you use MDM, I just wanna give a little PSA here, a public service announcement that uh, MDM's not actually completely run by Mozilla anymore. It's now more of a collaborative effort with most of the work, both to maintain and update everything that's going on here, being done by the Open Web Docs, which is actually a nonprofit that relies on individual and corporate donations to fund their operation. I'm gonna put a link to them in the description, so if you'd like to learn more about it. And if you use MDM, which I'm pretty sure you do if you're watching this video, you might want to mention it to your boss or something like that because, uh, you know, say something like, I wouldn't be able to do my job if it wasn't for these guys and see if they can't throw a little bit of money their way to help fund everything they're doing so we can continue to rely on MDM and all the stuff here to be able to do our jobs properly. But anyway, with that out of the way, let's jump back on over to animating from display none right here. And so we want to do it, uh, in this case, it's transitioning, I guess. Uh, and so this, obviously, <laughs> it's not working right now. So what can we do to actually make this work? And there's a couple of things. The first thing is we actually wanna transition our display property as well. So just to make life a little bit easier here, I'm actually gonna do a transition uh, property and I'm gonna do display and opacity just so I can break it off onto more lines. And then this one's gonna be my duration, which would be one second. And so that just means the display and the opacity are going to transition over a duration of one second. And if I do this, it's still not gonna work. <laughs> that would that'd be nice if that was the trick, because that was the trick when we did it with the keyframes before, right? Uh, but it's not actually far off. 
there's just one more line that we need, which is our transition behavior. And this is the new thing that sort of unlocks everything, which is allow discrete, or one of two new things. There's a second one that we're gonna need in a minute. What this allow discrete means is, because as I said before, if something involves a discrete animation going on, transitions will not work. It just goes, nope, there's a discrete animation here. We're, we're ignoring the transition. Now what we're saying is, whoa, 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 wait a second here. We're gonna allow it even though we have those discrete animations on there and it works sort of. It's working in one direction, we're getting there. So now we're actually, this way is not working, but going the other way is. And this is where there's that second new thing that I mentioned, which is that we want to add in one more thing to actually tell it where it's coming from. And that's because it's going from a display none to what we have here. And it gets a little bit lost along the way. And this is one of those frustrating things where it feels like, oh, I just figured it out. It's well, why, why is it only working in one direction? And I understand that's so why MDM is great um, for things like this. And sometimes CSS can just feel really frustrating though. And you feel like you're getting there and then you hit another roadblock and you're getting there and you hit another roadblock. And from my experience, most of those frustrations start to go away when you understand a lot of the fundamentals of how the language actually works, including things like our discrete animations, as well as things like formatting context and containing blocks and more things that just don't get talked about enough. And if you'd like to get a really solid understanding of why CSS works the way it does, and so that way you're less frustrated with it and you're writing it with a lot more confidence, I'd suggest checking out my course CSS Demystified, which I created for that exact purpose. There is a link to it in the description. But if you just wanna worry about this transition, that's fine too. We're gonna to look at exactly that right now, which I'm gonna go on the open here and we're gonna use a bit of nesting. Um, we'll look at the non-nested version of this as well, but I'm gonna do a starting style here. And this is, as I said, I hinted at there's, I didn't hint at, I said, there is a new thing, which is uh, another new thing, like our allow discrete, which is our start style. And it's not start style, actually, it's, I said it out loud, and like start style doesn't sound right. Starting style. And the starting style is where does this thing start from? So I actually wanna have my starting style of an opacity of zero that's going to go to here. And now it fades in and it fades out. So it looks a lot nicer, right? I'm happy with that. Uh, the one thing at this point, this might feel like, oh, well, I'm going, I have the zero here and the zero here. That's kind of frustrating and annoying. You're gonna be very happy about this in a second though, because right now this works. And if this is all you need, well, I mean, it works, so that's great. But by having this, this, and this as three separate things instead of just two, it opens up a whole world of extra stuff that we can do. So as an example of that, maybe I come here and I do a translate of zero and a negative 25 VH. So if I just do that here, and then here, I come in with my zero, zero, like that. And for now, let's actually have the starting style exactly the same. So we're this and this are matching one another. It's going to go in, and then it's gonna go back to where it was. So it's the same thing in both directions. But because we have these separated, that means we can actually make these different. So I can actually say that this one is a positive 25. So the starting style is different from when we're going towards our closed state. So we really have to think of, this is my starting style, this is once it's opened, and this is where it goes once it's closed, which is kind of weird and different from how we might normally think about things just because the order of it. But you can see it slid in from the top because we're going from the negative 25, and now it's gonna go out the bottom. So that's kind of cool because we can have different directions and different things going and it just opens up that extra world of control. Now I did mention that on here, we're going in with the starting style uh, is nested inside of here. And I'm using nesting because I find this is just a lot easier to do it this way. And that's just also because if this is supported by the browser, then nesting is 100% supported. So I'm not worried about the browser support of nesting because I'm using this. And speaking of browser support, this is one of those nice things where browser support is far from perfect right now. Everything I'm doing is only working in Chrome. The animation ones I think is one version back and this starting style is only supported in the latest release. And speaking of browser support, if you go to can I use, and actually we should do that together so I can show this to you. And if we look up starting style first, we'll notice that it's supported. It's there, it's in Safari and in our Chromium browsers. Firefox, it's not quite there yet, um, but at least it's in our two browsers. So that is awesome. The one that's a little bit annoying is if we look at the transition behavior, which is that other one, right? Uh, behave, you gotta spell things properly for these to work, uh, where it looks like it has equal support and it's actually coming in Firefox. So that's great. We're getting much better browser support for it. It's almost at you know, it's 78%, it's fantastic. The thing is, if we scroll down a little bit here, 
uh, we get to this one, which is transition behavior allow discrete, <laughs> uh, which all of a sudden it's not working in Safari or Firefox. And it's specifically talking about our display property there. And that's because, as I said, we have other discrete animations. We have our background images and there's a whole bunch of other stuff where Safari is supporting those. Safari and Firefox is on the way to supporting them, but it's only Chromium browsers right now that are supporting when you're using it specifically with display, which is a little bit eh, kind of annoying. Um, but I mean, support's still at over 70%. And if this doesn't work, it just means the animation won't be there. The, everything else is still perfectly fine. You're, but the thing is, even if you're on one of these browsers where it's not working, it's a progressive enhancement where we're not gonna break anything because none, nothing I've done, like the starting style, if there's no animation, it doesn't really matter. So this not being understood by the browser, if it's older, doesn't matter. And if the, it gets to these and it goes, well, I'm just not doing this. I don't know what this transition behavior is and I can't do a transition on display. It just means it's turning it on and off. So we just go back to square one where we don't have that animation in older browsers. Newer ones get the nicer experience. The best way to do web development is to do it with progressive enhancements where things look better on browsers that support it, but nothing is broken on older browsers. They still get all of the stuff they need, just it doesn't look quite as good. But yeah, we have a couple of other things that I wanna talk about. And the first one, uh, or it's mostly about the, the nesting here because and the backdrop. Uh, I'm gonna come up here and I'm doing this because it's on a dialogue. And if you do this on a popover, you'll wanna use this as well, which is we're going to add in overlay. And overlay is just because uh, when we open a modal, you can actually see this inside of our dev tools. If I drag these on over, uh, there is, oh, look at that. It's saying that it doesn't understand what's happening here. Why not? Did, we didn't break anything, did we? They got to update the dev tools. Look at that, it's working fine. <laughs> uh, see this top layer pill here though? Uh, so the top layer is making sure that this is in front of everything else. And popovers also use this top layer and it just ensures sort of like prevents any Z index issues basically from coming up. It's bringing it all the way to the front. And if you don't include the overlay as one of your things here, it's possible when your animation's turning off or, or coming on that if you have Z index stuff going on, the top layer only comes in at the end or halfway through. I'm not sure exactly how it would work, but it just, it, you might have these layering issues. Whereas if you're mentioning the overlay here with the allow discrete, everything should be fine. So yeah, there we go. That's working. It's up and down and we want to get that backdrop working. So what we're going to do is let's do our backdrop and make it look a little bit fancier first. So there we go. I just added a red to blue gradient on there. Nothing too fancy. So when I open it, we get the backdrop that comes in and then the backdrop disappears. And once again, we're going from a display none to a display of blocks. We can use all the exact same things that we've uh, learned along the way here to make that actually transition in. Uh, and actually I'm doing this on my open. Let's just, we can just, it can always have that background image. We don't need to uh, change that. So our background image is always there and this will be an opacity of zero. And then when we have our dialogue open, we can change the backdrop. And then here the opacity can be like 8.75 or something just so we can actually see through it. Now it's still not gonna transition, but we see that at least it's working uh, and everything is there. Awesome. The next thing we're gonna do is let's come in with what we were looking at before where we do our transition properties, right? And we wanted our opacity, but then we also need the display and we also need the overlay. So our top layer works properly. Since we're transitioning, we'll come in with a transition duration of one second. So it matches everything else that we've been doing so far. And we're gonna lastly come in with that transition behavior. Nice little bit of reinforcement here in this learning, right? You cover the same thing, go a little bit faster the second time around uh, of allowed discrete. And in doing that, we get it not working in this direction, but it works when we go backwards or when we close it because we don't have a starting style. And this is where the nesting thing comes up. Um, because if I do it start, starting, style, here, this is gonna drive people nuts if they don't watch this. You know, a lot of people drop off when they're watching my videos. They'll have watched the first half and they're gone now. They're missing out on something that's going to drive them bananas. <laughs> One of those things is CSS that can be a little bit frustrating. Uh, we're gonna do an opacity of zero here and it's not going to work. <laughs> this is one of those uh, annoying things with CSS. Um, right, because it's working. And actually just really fast here, you can see if I open and close it and then open it really fast, it's like the anim it, because it was at that point of the animation, it's just continuing from where it was. 
I think that's kind of cool, <laughs> right? So like, it, it'd be kind of weird if it janked all the way back up, but anyway, I'm getting off topic. Uh, this isn't working because I'm using nesting and you can't nest inside of a pseudo element. Just the way it is with CSS and the way CSS nesting works. So because of that, I actually have to take this off. And this is a limitation. If you look up in like the actual spec, it's in there um, that you can't do that. So what we need to do is actually do an at starting style here, starting style. And then in here, and this is just, it's an at rule. So it works just like a media query or something like that, where I can then bring rules inside of that. And then here I can say that the opacity is going to be a uh, zero. And now we can close it and it closes and we can open it and it fades in as well. <laughs> and so if ever you have any pseudo element at all, you cannot use nesting within that pseudo element. It's one of those just gotchas of CSS. I think this is just so much cleaner, so much nicer, but if you do have a backdrop or something else that you want to be able to play with or animate or do whatever that involves nesting or you use a before and an after and you're trying to do this because maybe you're doing a display of none to a display of block or whatever it is on a pseudo element, you need the starting style on the outside and the pseudo element nested inside of that and not the other way around. Now, if you'd like to learn more about modals and everything with like the dialogue here and the, the show modal and the close and how they work and all the different stuff to do with them and more about the backdrop and all of that stuff, I've gone in depth on how they work in this video that is right here. And if you were interested in CSS Demystified, the link for that is in the description. And with that, I would like to thank my enablers of awesome who are Philip, Andrew, Simon, and Tim, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.